čo by mali byť v svete. Kiel aj pri vlastnom dovie, pri vlastnom dovie, o tajnosť byť v svete. So, those that are going to be speaking have been asked by the family to say those few words. And uh, I'd like to uh, start out with, with uh, Maria. Walter's not feeling well today, but I'll turn it over to Maria. I hope I get that I'm scrapping out. I'll be a better water, but it don't tell them. Chapan, no, I need to get it. I'm a capuchita, I'm a machine, I'm a machine. No, 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 our grandchildren and our, our, for our great grandchildren, they should read books like this to learn about their history, to learn about how family, how important a family is. We have cultural differences. One of, in our culture, one of it is uh, to have a big family, have lots of grandchildren, great grandchildren, and to keep together, like to stay together and help each other. You know, that's a family. And uh, I. I became friends with a great woman, Judy, my friend, and then uh, me, me to my heart, this time, uh, <laughs> a wee bit, it's my heart. Jojo, and, <laughs> and then uh, one, one day, like a sad day came when we had to, we had to gather and uh, to be with her when she left this uh, Mother Earth, when she left Mother Earth, and it was a beautiful, beautiful day. You know, it was sad, but it was beautiful because uh, there was no suffering, and we were all there with her, and I sang her a beautiful song, a courage song, for her to lead to the spirit world. And when we were at the library there, I went and prayed at the library, and I sang that song for her, because she's here with us in spirit. Look after all your families, because that's what she did. She loved her children, so you do the same. Hi, hi. Thank you. Yeah. Need some eyes. When she said need some eyes, and all those hands went up, the word means uh, not that attractive. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as diplomatic as I can translate. <laughs> Now I'd like to uh, call up our mayor, Mayor Charlie Clark. Please uh, say a few words, Charlie. Woo! Tansi, thank you, Eugene, uh, Maria, uh, for uh, your words to, to start us off, and to all the musicians who are here. I know we're going to be hearing some music. Chief Bobby Cameron, it's good to be with you again. I think the second time in four days or three days, and third time in ten days uh, we gathered together. Uh, to all the elders that are here, I, I've seen others. I understand we have a chief from Akakakup here, uh, Simon Bird, uh, who I've been learning some Cree from on Cree Simon Says on Facebook. If anybody uh, wants to carry the legacy of, of learning Cree language, uh, I really enjoy that. And he uses visuals to help make sense of it all. And uh, it's very powerful, and I, so I hope you keep that going. Uh, and uh, I'm just very, very honored to be here with all of you today. And, and it's standing room only, which is obviously a testament to uh, Ms. Ahenikyu and to the legacy that she left. Uh, and to all of you who are family members, you must be so proud. Uh, and, and I'm very proud to be with you today. I'm only really learning more about Frida Ahenikyu and, and what she did, but I can only imagine back in the 60s and 70s and 80s when she was a scholar in a white, you know, uh, university and in the institutions here that uh, I don't think there was many, many uh, uh, Cree women, you know, that were studying and, and, and progressing and writing books, creating the foundation for, uh, for, uh, for the Cree language uh, to be translated, I guess, into that sort of institutional academic world, but also so that it can be shared and carried on by so many communities uh, beyond that. And I understand even around medical terminologies, so, so that there would be the ability to better understand 
uh, when doctors and, and, um, and, and nurses in communities could, could translate the terms uh, from, uh, from Cree into, uh, into, into English so that the treatment could be more effective. I mean, what a visionary woman to, to, be, to be doing that work back, back at that time, as well as raising this incredible family and, and all of the work she did. So I really want to thank Carol and Candice and all of the people in the library who, uh, who, who made the decision to recognize Frida right here uh, in the library on the 20th, which has become such an important community gathering place already here on 20th Street in, in Pleasant Hill. And so uh, on behalf of my colleagues, I, I know uh, Hilary Goff is here, the counselor for War II. Uh, I also saw David Forbes, uh, uh, the MLA for the area. Um, uh, I want to thank you and thank this work. And uh, I was at the reconciliation reading uh, room with, uh, with many of you. Uh, and Eugene, the work that you've been doing as a real leader in our community on reconciliation and, and, and uh, during the TRC, uh, as, a, as a residential school survivor, uh, helping to tell that story and share that story. We, we, were, we gathered here today together for the Reconciliation Reading Room. I feel like the library is really taking some very important strides in, in helping to show and demonstrate what, uh, what reconciliation can look like in our community. It's our goal as a council to take strides together with the, the FSA and with the Tribal Council, with Comfy, here and with all of you in the community. So for, for our students, for the next generation that are coming up that we're so proud of and we're so excited and optimistic about your future here in this city. So, so thank you again. And uh, again, on behalf of, of my colleagues on city council and all the citizens of Saskatoon, have a wonderful day. And I, I look forward to, to doing some reading of some Cree language right here in the Frida Henneke Library on 20th Street. to uh, the uh, Read for Reconciliation project that's happening downtown. And just a uh, couple weeks ago, we celebrated the Round Prairie opening, uh, the homeland of Uniti. And today, uh, we're celebrating the Dr. Rita Henneke Library in Treaty 6 territory. And one of the signatories to the treaty was Chief Atakaku. And, uh, some of the writings of Frida are about Chief Atakaku. But we're honored today to have the Chief of the Atakaku uh, First Nation be here to say a few words to the family and on behalf of the family, Chief Mary Henneke. Thanks for the question. First of all, uh, thank Maria for opening prayer, wishing us all a good day here to celebrating uh, Dr. Frida Henneke on this the library. And, uh, really an honor to be invited here by the family, the Henneke family, Greg Ash, and, and all the grandchildren and, uh, and, their, uh, and, their, and their great grandchildren. You know, I got to know the family of 20 years of real good, invited to a lot of their uh, family the family events, even when, when Frida was on her last trip here. I've uh, been there with the family then, but Again, it's a real honor to be here. Uh, thank the mayor and the public, Saskatoon Public Library for naming this library in honor of her to keep her legacy going, knowing how important our history, our Cree history is, how important our Cree, Cree uh, language is. Let's keep that going. Uh, a lot of good books she produced, uh, a lot of good stories. She uh, wrote a few stories about some of our elders back home and wish we had more time to say some of the funny stories about Mary Cecilia and Alice Anikyu. They spent a lot of time back home in their, in their days of retiring. But again, Mayor and uh, staff, thank you again from our community, Edward Muskate, for honoring us with this day. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Chief Mary Anikyu. 
I would like to introduce uh, one of her, her brothers and her sister-in-law, uh, Hector and Ethel, are also here. The family don't have too many uncles left, so I have a nice round of applause for <laughs> Some years ago, we celebrated at the old Union Center, it was uh, some, one of Frida's achievements. I'm not sure how many books are out there. We're, nobody's really sure. We know that there's well over 20, and there are still some being uh, brought to print. But I remember that day when uh, we were celebrating uh, Dr. Frida Enicu's day, and I, I think at that time, something like 18 or 19 books had been published. And I said, how many of you out there have even read five books? Dr. Uh, Reverend Danny Umberto raised his hand. I said, how many have read 10 books? And he raised his hand again, the only one in the room. I said, how many have even read 15 books? Staring me was again. I said, I'm sorry, uh, Reverend Umberto, I don't need reading the same book 15 times. <laughs> but uh, before I, I call up uh, my, my relative to speak, uh, you know, she was so, for us, uh, extended family, part of the extended family. Her, her way of, uh, of teaching, and I remember she was so kind, you know, uh, after she got sick, the only way she could communicate was in Cree. And uh, so whenever I'd want to say, uh, hello, Frida, she'd just look at me and smile and she'd say, nehi away, <laughs> which means speak Cree. Okay? So, you know, I didn't get the message. But it was during that time that uh, Senator Hilliard Irvine uh, was also on my case. And he's not the first one. Smith Atomoy was also on my case to speak Cree. But Senator Irvine's lesson, and I, and I want to do this now while these young people are here. Senator Irvine's lesson is this, and to also all of you in the room. We've been brainwashed and told that we have lost our language. And Senator Irvine said this, it's always been within us. It's up to us to find it. You don't have to relearn it. It's in all of us. It's innate. But we've been brainwashed with colonial thinking. You can't lose something that's always already been yours. So it's important. And that's one of the powerful lessons that I, I learned from, from Frida. And uh, I've made an effort now. And uh, encourage everyone else to make that effort. That's what she would like the most for all of us to speak our language. With that, I'd like to call up my, uh, my chief from the uh, Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, also a Cree speaker. Chief Bobby Cameron. tremendous work for First Nation people in participation in, in the economy. So what is that gets up to the podium and Eugene says, I first saw you, Eric. I thought you were the man from Glad. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, yeah, Eric's got a lot of white hair in the U.S. But I want to thank Eric for being there. I'm going to ask you I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to Shake each and every one of your hands. So the little ones here, before we get started, 
Can you follow me word for word? And then for anybody in the crowd, a quick prayer and creed. And it goes like this. Word for word, guys. Get ready. Nigan. Nigan. Mantu. Mantu. Kina. Kina. Skumen. Skumen. Mio. Mio. Kiskao. Kiskao. Megwats. Nigan Mantu. Kinaskumen. Mio. Kiskao. Megwats. Thank you, dear Lord, dear Creator, for another beautiful day. You just learned some Greek. You know, it's, it's, it's a good prayer. To everybody here, to our local Maria, thank you for the prayer. Mayor and Saskatoon Public Library, Dolores Sand, Harry LeBond, Chief Larry, our good brother Simon, Mr. and Mrs. Ahenneke, the Office of the Treaty Commission, my little buddy Kale, where's Kale Gray Eyes? There he is, Eddie Kale. I want to acknowledge, acknowledge you, Eddie. Anyhow, this is uh, Uncle Oliver in the back. Hugh Step. Everybody that's here, it's a good day because it says we are going to continue that, that teaching and value for language. You know, this library is forever. This library is going to stand when many of us in this room are gone. When we go meet our loved ones on the other side. These little ones are going to be here, enjoying, learning, healing, understanding the importance of language. And I pitched a couple ideas already to the chair and the CEO right off the bat. <laughs> a couple agenda items when, at their next board meeting. You know, we can help. The FSIN can help in reaching out to the elders, to the Senate, to the veterans on their information they have in their homes at their band offices, within their organizations, and, and ask for an invitation, if they're willing, to share their knowledge, their books, their oral teachings, with this very important naming of the Dr. Frida and Henneke Library. So we're going to do that to every First Nation, but not only that, for every First Nation across Canada, because I also sit as the AFN Executive Rep for Saskatchewan. Another item we uh, pitched to the CEO and the Chair, that many of us are still healing, many of us are still learning and understanding our language and culture, and it's never too late in Wabamantic to understand your language. We stamina, we go ask the big square, maga, kinsto, ten kwe ask. Now I'm still learning, I don't speak it fluently, but I understand it. It's never too late. And we have many thousands of inmates that are in the institutions, the justice system, who are requesting library material to read. It's their way of healing. It's their way of learning and understanding. You know, we pray for all those people in the streets and the jails and the hospitals. As I know, late Dr. Frida, that's the way she was. Pray for everybody, that we find some, some sense of peace, some sense of hope where we're, where we're at in life, whether it's in our homes or whether it's behind bars. To the little ones here, thank you little ones for being here. You guys are all loved. That's how late Dr. Frida loved all, everybody. You all love, you're important, Continue in your education because education will take you far. The Dixon Wagamante, on behalf of the FSIN and our executive, our vice chiefs, Bob, Bob Rasti, Dust Ra, Kim Jonathan, Negwa Heather Bear, all send their best wishes. An awesome day. We're going to remember this for many, many decades. Dixon, hi, hi. Thank you, uh, Grima. I'd like to uh, call up. Relative, uh, Executive Director of the Office of Treaty Commissioner, uh, Mr. Harry LaFont. Tanji, the Tanskat now, the Pemas Wapi, the Pesito Sky, go for the AC Nogota, Kishote now. 
1876, which was a, uh, a year to be remembered, Chief Atakaku, selected by his peers to be the main spokesman for the Nehiok of his territory, went forward to sign on behalf, to be the first signer on behalf of these people, understanding in his heart and under consultation with his people, that the way of life of the Cree people was to be protected under his signature. The language was to be encouraged. The education system was to be the way of the Cree. The borrowing would come from the Cree people and teaching their own children. That was the dream he brought to that signing and the vision that he carried with him in his heart. And today we have one of his descendants. We're honoring one of his descendants. It is so important for us in Canada to focus our attention on those who have accepted the responsibility of being leaders and servants to their people. It is so important for us to work with media to begin to tell the story, the good stories, and make that the focal point of who we are as Canadians. And so today is an important day because we are focusing our, our attention on what is good and what is the foundation of who we are as Canadians. Frida Henneke not only raised a big biological family, and she is to be congratulated for that, but as Canadians, more importantly, she also raised a Cree family. She started a movement. She worked hard all her life. She was passionate. She was on the verge of obsessive. <laughs> and some of, her, some of her children have taken on that obsession Dolores being one of them. <laughs> but she raised this, this huge family and it's created a national network of people who, who have turned their lives to the preservation of the Cree language and what it, what it holds as a promise for the future. We have with us Eric. We have uh, Kevin Lewis in... Uh, in uh, Blue Quills, we have people like that who have spent their lives and are spending their lives pursuing the knowledge of, of the Cree language as, as the root to the worldview that is key to the healing and the development of our communities. And in doing that, enriching the whole Canadian understanding of Indigenous people and their place in confederation. So we need to we need to honor people like that, these servants who have been ex who have been identified as leaders in our community, as we did with Dakaku, with with uh, Mr. Osses, Sweetgrass. They were selected by their people to be leaders. And Frida allowed herself to be selected for the, to be a leader in preserving an integral part, a foundational part of who we, who we are as Canadians. So congratulations to the family for, for the hero that raised you. Congratulations to the city of Saskatoon 
for recognizing that. Congratulations to the universities who made it possible for her to express her servant her servantness to our communities and to to those people who are to, who are key to preserving her work. And congratulations to Canada, who is beginning to recognize that the Indigenous people bring with them a gift that will enrich the fabric of who we are as a country. So have a good day. Make sure that we never forget that this generation here we're doing it for them, but it, it can't happen without that generation over there having the opportunity to reconnect as, as a family unit and as a way of moving forward in education. You can't educate without elders, and fortunately our schools are beginning to recognize that. So let's have a good day, let's have a good next century and allow Frida to continue to expand her network through the, work, through the people that she, she, uh, she adopted into her Cree family. Allow them and encourage them and give them a place to have voice. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. I want to uh, <clears throat> share something dealing the teachings uh, that Harry shared with you and uh, Chief Bobby Cameron alluded to. You young people who are here, you're, you're here to do something that's part of a project. To the Chapans and the great Chapans and the grandchildren, you're also here in honor and in respect of your great grandma or your grandma, Coco. But this process is another process that we have to bring back. It's called bearing witness. And when Chief Bobby and Harry talk about this structure and this library is going to be here for generations. You young people will say, I was there when that day happened. Then you pass the story on. We're an oral history society. So that's why it's so important. It's not only here to show respect and to pay respect. It's also here because we want that next generation to carry on these stories of our warriors and our warrior woman being acknowledged. Unfortunately, sometimes it's after they're gone into the spirit world. Nevertheless, they're being acknowledged. We are being acknowledged. With that, I'd like to call up the baby girl of the, uh, of the family to uh, come and give a, a narrative of uh, some of the the family members, extended family members, and then I'm going to call on Dolores to also talk to some of, uh, talk about some of those that worked in the promotion of the free language with Frida. This is Joe Speed. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today and sharing this day with us. Um, you're going to have to bear with me as I'm presenting the speech on behalf of my brothers and sisters and our family. And being the youngest of 12 children, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Good morning, elders. Thank you, Maria, for your prayers. Chiefs, your worship, Mayor Charlie Clark, thank you for your words. Dignitaries, family, and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this very special occasion. Welcome to the Dr. Frida Henneke branch of the Saskatoon Public Libraries. My name is Josephine Grey-Eyes, and 
and I am the youngest biological child of Frida. It was an honor to be asked by my siblings to bring you the address on behalf of our family to you, our guests. I will, I will be talking about who Dr. Frida Hennecke was to us, our mentor, our greatest motivator and inspiration, our voice of reason, but above all, and over any of her many accomplishments, she was our mom. The story I will tell you today is starting from when our mom was a young girl to the parent she was to us throughout our lives. Mom taught by example. First off, I need to acknowledge her spirituality. She was born and baptized Anglican, married into the Catholic Church, and she also had a strong traditional value system. She has instilled faith in all of us. She taught us that no one religion or belief was greater than the other, and it was always your own connection to the higher power, which would give you hope when the day's struggles, struggles seemed overwhelming. That we should start our days with prayer, and every, for every joyous and happy occasion, for every struggle or burden, that we should pray in whatever way we were comfortable. So the very end of her journey here on earth, it was her faith that helped her, as well as all of us, to cope with the coming changes in our lives. She found comfort in knowing that when she left this world, she would join her grandsons and her great-grandchildren who had gone ahead to wait for her. I'm forever grateful that she has left these teachings of faith with us. Mom was the first child born to Edward and Annie Hennecke. Her siblings, our aunts and uncles by name, are Lucy, Cliff, Grace, Maureen, Hector, Jeffrey, and Linda. She started her journey in this world on the Takikuk First Nation. She attended Sandy Lake Day School and then moved on to St. Albans Residential School to continue her education. She left school before graduating to marry our, our father, Harold Hennecke, and moved to Muskeg. Our sister Dolores was born in 1951 and was closely followed by nine more children. She stayed home to raise her children and tend to life on the farm. Living the farm life, everyone had their share of duties that suited their age. They all knew how to drive trucks and tractors, haul and throw bales, feed and water the animals, milk the cows, make butter and cottage cheese. Household chores were chopping wood, hauling water, cooking, baking, cleaning, and gardening. But hunting was the main meat source, so every one of us had to learn how to pluck ducks, skin rabbits, as well as cut wild meat. Mom had also taught us girls the art of sewing, beading, and needlepoint. Over the years, my siblings and many of Muskeg's community members have shared stories of her unbelievable life's work on the farm. All of her children learned the value of hard work at an early age. After she graduated high school, she stayed in Muskeg and worked as an instructor for homemaker classes, which she taught cooking, canning, sewing, baking, and probably shared her experiences in parenting. In 1972, Nancy was born, and in 1975, I was born. Judy says she had perfected her art of baby making, so she stopped at me. <laughs> the next chapter of her life was deciding that she wanted to further her education and begin her post-secondary academics, taking classes to earn her Bachelor of Education and begin her career as a teacher and later a linguist. Without knowing how important her work would become, she put her heart and soul into it, spending many hours traveling and collecting stories from elders, and then bringing it all home to transcribe into English by hand and writing out all of those stories. My siblings are my best friends and my parents' greatest gift to me. I'm going to share with you a few memories as well as what I think each of my siblings has inherited from our mom. I believe that before she left this physical world, she was preparing us by leaving a bit of herself in each of us so we would look to each other when we would get lonely, and that would be her parting gift. I'll start with Dolores, better known as number one. <laughs> Dolores speaks beautiful Cree, and has carried on the legacy of mom's love of the Cree language. As I said, mom taught by example. Dolores became a teacher and an educator, and is currently working for the Canadian Bible Society, editing and a translation of the Cree Bible. When mom's health started to fail, it was Dolores who moved home to spend time and care for Mom in Muskeg Lake. 
They enjoyed their travel with Christopher and Chelsea, and they spent much time visiting and checking in on family. Dolores helped to keep Mom's house a home for all to visit, and for that we are forever thankful. Brenda also became a teacher and an educator. She is a fluent Cree speaker and has spent her 30-year career in various positions in the field of education. She's currently employed as the Director of Educational Programs at the Office of the Treaty Commissioner. Brenda has many early memories of Mom when she was young, like waking up to the smell of fresh bread, and she says sometimes 30 loaves were ready before they got up for school. Brenda is sensible and level-headed and always makes the effort to attend as many family functions as she can, very much like her mom who was always on the road trying to attend every function she could or be there for us in every step of our lives. Barbara shares mom's love of reading and learning, earning a bachelor in social work, a certificate in justice, a certificate in mediation. She fondly remembers mom looking at a Sears catalog and sewing the items from what she's seen. She said, we were always the best dressed kids in school. Mom has, Barb has mom's fiercely protective love for her family and shares her love of reading. She has a very striking resemblance to her mom, which is comforting and also startling at times for a lot of people. <laughs> our oldest brother, Hal. I won't attempt to, uh, to list his many trades and certifications, he is an actual jack of all trades and is knowledgeable in a scholarly way, but also in hunting, fishing, living off the land. And if you were any, in, ever in trouble for any reason, he's the guy to call. He would find the solution. Hal would often join mom in doing chores as they were the early birds. Hal has the work ethic of both our parents and continues to be a hard worker and is always looking for the next big project. He shares in mom's love of humor. The smiles are identical, and his heart is as giving and kind as our mom's was. Judy has her mom's nurturing trait, raising six of her own children, along with any others that came her way needing love. She has held her traditional spiritual teachings close to her heart, and participates in ceremony at every opportunity. Judy remembers mom sneaking away to travel to ceremonies as they were banned or against the law at the time. She believes it was mom's hunger for knowledge that kept her need to attend ceremonies a priority. She also recalls that there was always another family living with them. And she must have admired that in her because she became the next one to always have a family living with her. Elaine has mom's softer side, the social and emotional. You can see her smile and hear mom's laugh when she's around. Elaine has shared with me the story of her early teachings around the home and the farm. She said that if mom didn't know how to do something, she brought someone in to teach them. She said that mom once hired someone to come and teach her and the kids how to tan hides, as it was one of the few things that she didn't know how to do. Elaine also went back to high school later in life and earned a degree in human justice, working for SEGA for many years. Boss man. Lawrence Boss Gray Eyes. Before the sun is up, he's well into his day planning, thinking, and strategizing how he will get it all done. So much like our mother. He has her energy, work ethic, and an unwavering love for our community, the place that we call home. He has always been the one to get family together for projects, teaching the young men to hunt, to work, or just to play some cards. He lived next door to mom, and when he was home, you would find him sitting and visiting with her, Every morning they would have coffee and eat porridge and at night play cards and have tea and he would always stay for a lap around the rosary. Saskatoon Tribal Council with um, the community coordinator in Muskeg and uh, she is very much like our mom that she needs to vi she needs to visit she needs to travel there's never enough hours in the day and it's early morning and late nights of travel for Gloria and there's always a 
a quick knock on the door and she comes in and she says her hello is kisses and hugs and then she says she's off on her way. That was very much like what her mom was like and she would always stop in on, on whoever, travel far and wide just to stop in and say hi to people and, and pop in old fashioned. And, uh, and I admire that about Gloria because she has no, no, um, no hesitation about going to see those. If she's thinking about you, she will go and find you and, and check on you. Um, the next one would be uh, our, our late brother, Kevin. Kevin and my mom were very close. They had a special kind of love. And uh, my mom was very proud of Kevin and she loved him and it was reciprocated. She, he loved her so much and he was so proud of her. One time we were in um, Edmonton and uh, she was receiving an award, a Lifetime Achievement Award for uh, National Aboriginal Achievement Award. And I sat beside Kevin and uh, Kevin said, sister, there's something wrong with me. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, my heart, my chest feels like it's gonna burst open and there's water coming out of my eyes. <laughs> he was so proud of her and she was of him. But uh, I find comfort in knowing that he's chopping wood, he's keeping her warm by our fires. Because they say that the people in heaven, that we on earth have our own fires, and that the people in heaven surround our fires. If they're ever feeling lonely for us, they visit our fires, and they visit the people that, that are they left behind here on earth. And when we leave this earth and go to the spirit world, our fire goes out. And uh, I know that my mom and my mom and Kevin and Selma and Anita and our our uh, nephews and grandsons and granddaughter are at our fires. And uh, if you're ever feeling lonely, know that you know all you have to do is pray to them for them to be with you in your heart and in your spirit. Duke is the next one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking to Dolores for the <laughs> the lineup. Uh, Duke, as my mom called him, the perfect 10, the baby boy, he also had um, earned a degree in social work, but he um, was a carpenter and at heart, and he worked for a couple of years in social work, and then moved back to construction, and uh, currently works in um, Fort Mac as a heavy equipment operator. Uh, he is in Guatemala at the moment, enjoying the sunshine while we're here. Um, I know they're missing out. They're, uh, they're hopefully watching the live stream. Um, Duke shares my mom's love. When you see Duke, you're guaranteed a hug and a, you know, even if you're a guy, he's going to bring you in for the, bring you in for the hug from the handshake and uh, that's very much the way my mom was, you know, always hugging and kissing and, and and Duke was never afraid to show affection. Um, he shares our mom's love of art. My mom used to always buy from the starving artists, wherever they were, whoever they were, she, they found her and she bought art. And that's what my brother does now. His house is, is a museum, it's filled with art. And, uh, and when my mom passed, she had this cabin right here, was so full of art and, and different uh, pieces that we were able to share with the whole entire family. That's how much she had. My sister Nancy is the second youngest and she's two and a half years older than me. We, uh, my mom had her first 10 children and when Nancy was born, my brother Duke was 12, and uh, or nine, sorry, he's 12 years older than me. And so um, when Nancy was born, it was nine years later and we were, uh, a sort of a separate family of the same family. We, uh, mom was already back to school and she was, uh, you know, I don't have memories of the farm life because that was the first 35 years of her life. Uh, 40 years of her life were the farm life and I don't have those memories because by the time I was born, we were already living in universities. We were uh, traveling and we were, my mom was going to school and she was a teacher and we lived in many different communities. But my sister Nancy is, uh, she's 
very much like my mom and she, um, in, the, in her tenacity and her passion. And when she finds something she's passionate about, she's all in. And, uh, and Nancy's a, a water and land protector. And I know that my mom would be so proud of the work that she's done and uh, the places she's been. And uh, she has carried on and started doing the, uh, the sewing and the, uh, the, the things, the home things that mom taught us to do when we were little kids that we hadn't done in, in many years. And uh, today I'm wearing this skirt that my sister Nancy made me. And uh, it's mom's teachings of uh, every different kind of aspect of life. She taught us, uh, see I have to ground myself in my faith right now so I don't cry, <laughs> but uh, she gave us so many gifts that we didn't realize at the time were gifts, and uh, I know for much of my life, um, she uh, went from a few gray hairs to a whole head by the time I was an adult. <laughs> um, she, we... Uh, I guess for me, myself, I uh, am most thankful for her gift of faith to me because I know that no matter what kind of struggle or obstacle I encounter, that I know that my faith will bring me through. And also my family, my gift of, you know, my brothers and sisters, my adopted brothers and sisters who she, they chose her and she chose them. You know, we, we chose her from angels in heaven coming down to earth to choose her as our mom, but she chose them, and they chose her, and they become a huge part of our life, our, our adopted brothers and sisters, and uh, she always made everybody feel at home. If you wanted to, you know, have a meal, or needed a place to sleep, or, you know, you, you popped in old-fashioned, and she would, uh, and they, you know, Judy says that I'm like my mom in this, and that oh, you always feed everybody, and if there, if another person walks through the door, as the saying goes, you add another cup of water to the soup. And uh, she often did that, and I'm sure when my, my siblings, older siblings, were young, um, that there were struggles. You know, she, she fed a family of 20 at a regular time. You know, ch 20 children in her home in, a, in small houses. You know, we're so fortunate with our technology and what uh, we all have now as far as transportation and technology. Um, I just want to say uh, to those of you who are here, the children and uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, that our mom left a legacy of hard work and education and she made it a priority in our lives. And uh, I want to challenge you all to find your passion and find your dream and live your dream and be who the best version of yourself that you can be. Um, that's all she ever wanted for us. She loved us so much that she wanted the very, very best for all of us. And I, and I, and I accidentally skipped over Linda. And this was the greatest part because she was her first grandchild. And uh, she came in between me and Nancy. Or be before Nancy was born, Linda was born. And, uh, and Linda says uh, that, you know, our mama loved unconditionally. And she was her first grandchild. And I don't know how many of you here are grandparents, but... Uh, when you have your first grandchild, it, it will change your whole entire life. And uh, she loved Linda so much, and Linda loved her so much. And uh, Linda says that uh, she knew, or she, she believed that uh, she was my mom's favorite grandchild. <laughs> but she also sent another text message saying, but I think that she made us each feel like we were her favorite grandchild. Every time that she seen them, you know, she could identify something within somebody that she liked about you and she would focus on that. She wouldn't think about all the bad things that you were to everybody else, you know. She focused on the good thing that she loved about you. And, and you know, I think not only with the, the legacy of language, um, she also left, left a legacy of love. You won't often see our family members seeing each other or leaving each other without hugging and kissing and telling each other that we love each other and I think that that is so important to carry on um, in the years since our mom has been gone we've kind of fallen to the wayside we don't have a big Christmas anymore we don't have our big events anymore but we are still connected and we do 
um, greet each other that way. And I think that was the biggest thing that she left for us was our spirituality and our, and our love for each other and our love for education and for higher learning. But uh, thank you all for being here and bearing with me. I know I lost half my speech somewhere, so I hope I covered everybody. I know our adopted siblings um, were very important to her and the people who are carrying on her legacy. And I don't have the list of names. I'm sorry. It's Eric and Jean and um, Kevin Lewis and uh, Neil McLeod and, you know, all of the people that are here that are working in the, within the Cree language and uh, preserving and reviving the Cree language, uh, would you please stand up? I, I don't have my list of people here. And our brother Eric Wolvengray is uh, receiving an award for his work. Simon. Many of these people were among students and we're very proud of where they how far they've come and, and they don't stop working. They haven't stopped working on her work and uh, so her legacy lives on in all of these people and uh, we're very proud of all of you and uh, today we honour you as well. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you for that. Awesome chronological history. And uh, you know, the person who put all this together, uh, and I know Carol is probably going to acknowledge her, is Jana. And uh, yeah, there's Jana over there. And, I met with her the other day to review the agenda, and uh, I just, she's so nice, she's so kind. I didn't have the heart to tell her I was going to change it. Because <laughs> the agenda you have right now is revised by me. And there's a reason for it. And uh, the reason is, I think it's important to find out what members of the Indigenous leadership and the uh, family have to say. Because uh, as much as we appreciate it, those stories have to come out so that the Saskatoon Public Libraries, through their board and through their staff. You think you understand now. You think you know now what you have done. You have no idea of, of this legacy. So with that, I'd like to call up uh, representing the Saskatoon Public School Library Board, or Saskatoon Public Library Board, uh, Candace Grant. unfortunate task of following Josephine's speech and, and thank you very much for sharing those memories of your mother. It's incredibly meaningful for those of us who didn't have the opportunity to know her personally. So good morning everyone and, and welcome to our official uh, renaming of the Saskatoon Public Library Dr. Frida Hennigue Branch. On behalf of SPL's Board of Trustees it is my honor to be here today as we pay tribute to an inspirational woman. For more than 100 years, Saskatoon Public Library has been a strong proponent of lifelong learning. And our libraries are critically important public spaces where everyone, regardless of age, gender, ethnicity, income, abilities, or frankly anything else, can access the wide range of programs and services that we provide. With that in mind, it seems particularly fitting that we are renaming our branch today after Dr. Frida Hennecke, a woman who did so much to promote the importance of education and the preservation of Indigenous languages and literary heritage. Dr. Ahenikyu, as you've heard already, was tirelessly creative and curious. This is evidenced by the breadth of her many published works, which include everything from children's books and curricular materials to scholarly examinations of the Cree language and, as we heard earlier, the Cree medical lexicon. Like Dr. Ahenikyu, Saskatoon Public Library strives to contribute to a spirit of wonder discovery and creativity in all of Saskatoon citizens. It is our wish to foster a community of informed and engaged lifelong learners. To support this commitment, Saskatoon Public Library provides spaces, technology and services that support diversity, personal development, employability and civic engagement. We want this branch and all of our branches to serve our community and to serve as community pillars throughout the city of Saskatoon. And considering Dr. Hennecke's 
uh, reputation as a pillar of strength, perseverance, and inclusion, it would be difficult to imagine a more appropriate namesake for a library where we've gathered today. We are very proud to be able to honor Dr. Hennigy's legacy, and I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, Candace, and uh, deliver a message to your board. We applaud them for thinking outside the box. I'd like to call up the uh, CEO and Director of Libraries in Saskatoon, Carol Cooley. here today on Treaty 6 territory in the traditional homeland of the Navy, Métis, sorry, and I'd like to acknowledge the ongoing journey we as Canadians are making towards reconciliation. Today's renaming of this branch is a meaningful and important step in that journey. Saskatoon Public Library is committed to responding to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. The naming of this branch is in response to Action 79. Participate in a strategy to commemorate Indigenous peoples, histories, and contributions to Canada. As many of you are aware, honoring Indigenous perspectives is one of the four goals of our strategic plan. While we recognize that making a significant change will require long -term and a long-term and dedicated effort, I'm pleased to say that we've already been making substantial progress in this regard. In the past six months alone, we've launched a Read for Reconciliation program, opened a reconciliation reading area at the Francis Morrison Central Library, and named our new branch in Stonebridge after the Round Prairie Métis. And of course, we are renaming this branch today in Dr. Hennecke's honor. I'd specifically like to thank our partners at Reconciliation Saskatoon for the guidance they've provided for all of our reconcili effort, reconciliation efforts to date. None of what, we'd what we have accomplished so far, or hope to accomplish in the future, is possible without continued assistance from our many friends and partners moving forward. And thank you to the Office of the Treaty Commissioner and the Elders who assisted us in naming this branch. We're gathered here to honor a very inspirational woman, a keeper of pre-culture and language, and a tireless promoter of Indigenous ways of knowing. I'm talking, of course, about Dr. Frida Hennigue. Saskatoon Public Library is humbled to be renaming this branch after Dr. Frida Hennecke. Her life was characterized by incredible strength, humility, and perseverance. The number of awards she received in her life is a testament to the incredible breadth of influence and respect that she earned through her work. She truly lived an incredible life. We hope that in renaming this branch, her story will inspire others to follow their dreams and to persevere in the face of adversity. We also hope that sharing her story draws attention to the importance of literacy and the power it has to change lives. I'd like to express our organization's sincere gratitude to Frida's family who have given us their blessing to name this branch in her honor and memory. So thank you again for joining us today as we celebrate and remember this groundbreaking woman, mother, scholar, and storyteller. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for all you do and all that your staff do. I went and visited the uh, library before we started, and there's going to be uh, tea and bannock there for everyone after we're done our ceremony. But now we'd like to let you hear Dr. Frida herself as we listen to, to her read, We Chat in the Birch Trees. So if I could just have everybody just silent so you can all hear it nicely. And, and if there are tears, let them flow. And they're for good reason. Kutta 
trae este pues y nos deja de esta voluntad que está. Mata este pues y nos deposita, si no es que cae camisa. Y pues este pues está guapa me oye, y esto más fue. Y que pues más y ven, que tiene este más por otro. Y pues me va a partir de los temas. Y a mata no se está pecho. ネットネットしてないですけどねわおみさけたんこ。ネットネットしてないですけどねわおみさけたんこ。ちょっとえさ、ウィスコスタ。ケスタンこ。わかめウィスタケスタンこ、エミセミニ。わ、わ、ウィ
I just want to uh, introduce myself. My name is Wallace Alossus. I come from uh, Thunder Child, Saskatchewan. I work at Confederation Park School. And my position is cultural support teacher, and I help these uh, people, uh, the teachers uh, uh, in the cultural area. They themselves uh, teach their children the, the pre, the pre portion, although I'll do the same thing in the cultural. Malanigana in an ask for Mawaya Marie. I like to uh, thank uh, Marie and acknowledge her for that, uh, the prayer she's given for this gathering. We feel really honored to be here. 